When it comes to making good videos, it all starts with your fundamentals. Lighting, framing, etc. But if you want to bring it from good to great, it takes a little more. And that's where the Smoke Ninja comes in. The Smoke Ninja is a pocket-sized smoke machine that you can bring anywhere that your inspiration takes you, whether you shoot photo or video. It's an entry-level device that's perfect for tabletop work like food or product videos and portraits, whether it's in a studio or in run-and-gun scenarios. So for anyone who's chasing after the cinematic look, we just all wish that it was as simple as pressing a button and getting it. Not possible. But this is the closest thing that gets you to feel that way. I've had the pleasure of shooting with the Smoke Ninja for a week now because PMI Gear actually reached out to me and wanted me to shoot their promo video. It was a real honor and pleasure to be a part of since I was a really big fan of their predecessor, the Smoke Genie. Now, although I was paid to shoot the promo video for the Smoke Ninja, this review that you're watching right now is entirely not sponsored, so I'm gonna be giving my honest thoughts, just my experience in using it in real world shooting scenarios. That way, you can decide whether or not it's actually for you. All right, let's check out everything that comes with the device. So as you can see, it comes with a nice compact soft case that you just open up and then boom, you see the device. The unit itself looks really lovely and we'll get into a little more about how we feel about this in a bit. But other than the device, it comes with the refill liquid. It's 100 milliliters. As you can see, I already used a bit of it. Comes with a wireless remote. And this is such a handy thing where you want to um, you know, be away from the device. I got this USB charging cable. What kind of secrets does this chamber hold? Not many for this one. What it does is help with the fog generation. Now it also comes with a quarter inch mount, which you'll attach to the side of the unit. This comes in handy in a lot of scenarios. So does this part over here, which is the magnetic mount. So along with the mounts, we got the nozzles. We got a curved nozzle. It's actually two pieces. We got a long nozzle as well as a short nozzle. So once you combine all of these, you have something that looks like a mini crowbar whack people with it. Along with these nozzles is a liquid nozzle, which uh, lets you create the dry ice effect. Now let's say you're on the go, you're just going to your next shoot, whether it's in a studio or just running gun scenarios. All you gotta do is just put this thing into the soft carrying case, zip it up, Check this whole thing into your camera bag. It doesn't take up very much room, which is what I love about it, just how compact it is. And it's a soft shell case, so it doesn't feel like it's really bulky and heavy, but it's still hard enough to protect everything that's inside. So let's talk about the build quality and the aesthetic of the actual device. So as you can see, it fits in the palm of my hand. It's like a really small device, impressively. I love how sleek it looks. I actually like the kind of like boxy-ish design and I love how minimal it feels as well. And it feels like there's no unnecessary grooves or weird aesthetic choices because everything feels functional. Like these guys are for mounting your quarter inch mount and your magnetic mount. And these are the grills to just allow the heat to dissipate. So it feels like all their design choices are for functional reasons. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they really cut any corners in terms of the design itself. I really love how lightweight it is as well. It feels like like it's solid, you know, but it doesn't feel cheap if you are mounting this on a pole or you're putting this in your camera bag or you're even mounting it on your camera bag strap and you're just like walking around or you're on set, it doesn't feel like it adds any additional weight really. So you can just whip it out and you can use it whenever you need to on your shoot. So that's how I feel about the main unit itself. Where I feel like they may have cut corners is maybe on the mount and it functions exactly the way you would expect it to along with the quarter inch mount. But when you really look at the quality itself, it looks kind of like plasticky. It feels like it could be 3D printed. And my first impressions of it was that it looks a little bit cheap. But uh, I realized that because it's this kind of material, it's actually nice and lightweight. I was worried that it would like snap or something like that if I were to use it too aggressively, but it didn't happen at all during our shoot. And I realized that if it was made from another material like metal, where it feels like, oh, it's nice quality, it would just make things a lot heavier and it would probably also increase the cost of the overall package. So I'm actually happy with this. Now in comparison to its predecessor, the Smoke Genie, they really dummy proof the design of the Smoke Ninja by making it really easy to use and having only three presets. So we got fog, dry ice, and steam. So if you use the Smoke Genie before or you've considered buying it, you'll know that you have to adjust the fan speed, the, the power output of it. So you don't have to think, your brain can focus on the art and the craft and the shoot. And all you have to do is press a button and you're good. As a director, you're always making like a million decisions on set. It's just um, a very valuable 
thing to reduce any of that cognitive load while you're thinking of other things in your shoot. So another feature that they advertise is the fast swap chamber and the battery. I mean, all you gotta do is do that and then you just gotta untwist it and then you put the other one, twist it back and it's good to go. Same with the battery, like it is so quick to do this. You just put in another battery and then boom, you're good to go. The only time that it would take long is if you were to try and do all this in one take like what we did. You know what's going well and you hear me go. Now the quarter inch mount means that I'm able to mount this on everything and anything. And if you don't have anything that you can mount a quarter inch on, then you can always use the magnetic mount. You can just put it on a wall, on the side of a car, just a various amount of things. And just mount it like right over here. Just kidding, that's not made out of metal. So another feature that I talk about is the LED health bar and it just looks really slick on the device, but it doesn't just look pretty, it's actually functional in a sense where there's a real-time smart interface built in. So while you're triggering the device, start noticing that the LED health bar starts dropping and you know exactly how much smoke you have left. Now, when you reach to the end of uh, how much smoke you can keep triggering, it'll turn red and that's really helpful so you don't have to guess on set how much smoke you have left. You can actually see in real time the recharging process so you know when you have a full tank to use again. Now with how versatile this thing is, it's no wonder they call it the Smoke Ninja. And if you wanna find out more of the features of this device, you can check out their website for a more in-depth description of everything. But let me know in the comments what kind of feature you wish you saw in the Smoke Ninja. All right, so, <laughs> oh, let's talk about the cons. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Now the first con that I have is the quarter inch mount. When I mount it on the device, it functions great. The problem that I have with it is that once I mount it on the device like this, I have a jolly old time trying to get this off. Now, to be fair, this is a prototype unit that I'm using right now. So the final version that you get in the box may be more polished and you're not gonna experience the problem. But for me, I do not like how it takes me ages to get this quarter inch mount off. Like, th this should just slip right off, right? But it's a struggle. And I'm also worried about breaking this uh, little latch over here for the battery as well because of how close it is to the mounting rails over here. So. I'm trying to like keep this open while wiggling this out, but it's quite tight, right? I finally got it off, but I'm really gonna feel this the next morning. For the magnetic mount, let's slip this on like this, right? Let's close it and let's say that you're using it for a full day of shoot. Boom, comes right out, like no problem. So I wish the other mount was as easy and smooth as the other one. Like I said, maybe it's just my unit. Another con I have is not really a big deal, to be honest, because most of the time, you're gonna be using this with the nozzles. When you are using it without any of the nozzles, this thing will spit oil, and it's just kind of like messy. Uh, I don't like that. But most of the time, when I was using it without the nozzle, it was mostly just making the product look pretty in the promo video. Honestly, this isn't even the best way to use the device without any of the nozzles. This wasn't like a big con for me, but this could be something for you to factor into if you're deciding whether or not this is for you. Next con I have, also isn't really a major con, is that although it comes with a really nice soft shell case that protects everything, like a truss that'll protect everything. I do wish that there was a hard case option just in case that you know, you're know you transporting it in a scenario where it needs to be a little more rugged. Maybe they'll come up with a hard case option in the future as well, but to my knowledge, it's not available. Now, although I'm a big fan of their precision nozzles and the options that you have for them and what you can achieve with them because of how much control you have, there's a small problem with it that I had. And like I said, it's very similar to the quarter inch. Maybe it's just my unit and the version that I have, but I find that sometimes the nozzle is a little bit too tight. When I have the jet tip nozzle in here, for example, into the curved nozzle like this, like it's great, it gets on, right? But when you have to actually take it out, I'm not gonna waste your guys' time. I honestly can't do it right now. And when you're on set, time is valuable, right? So when you're struggling to get this guy off, I even tried with pliers and people are gonna start making faces at you like this. So when I told uh, PMI Gear about this problem, they said that instead of just you know pulling it out, um, you can try twisting it and also just wiggling it back and forth. And let's try it right now. Gets off just fine. So maybe it was the first time that I was doing it. Maybe you'll experience that with your unit, maybe not, but I wanted to put it on this list anyways. And the last con that I have is, <laughs> It's a silly con, but I wanna bring it up anyways because it was one of the first things that I noticed when I received the device. I was like, oh my gosh, this device looks so cool. Uh, I can't believe I get to play with it. I've been waiting for a device like this all my life. And then I read the presets. We got fog, okay, steam, okay. And we got dry ice in the middle over here. And yeah, I know it's dry ice, but 
There's this weird like OCD part of me that wishes dry ice was two words instead of one. It's two words, right? So dry ice is two words. And I understand it's probably because for design reasons, like if you were to put a little space in there, like it, gets, it starts getting a little bit too close to the LED light bars. This is just me being nitpicky, to be honest. Like overall, I'm really happy with the device, which is what's gonna lead me into the pros list. So the things that I really like about this device, and the first thing being that, as you know, accidents can happen on set, whether it's bumping into a light, or tripping over a cable. I can't warn me about this. One of the most devastating ones was dropping the only prototype of the Smoke Ninja that I had. And guess what? It came out unscratched. This thing is so durable. I dropped it on concrete floor, like this one right here. I was worried that I would damage it and I couldn't do any more of the product video, but not a single scratch on it. Not advocating that you should just like slam this thing on the ground, but if you drop this, it's still gonna work. Another thing I was really impressed with was the precision nozzles. Now, at first I thought that, oh yeah, I guess precision nozzles are neat. It's nice that I have a little more control, but it's not just like a little bit. It really helps dial in the look that you're going for. So for example, like the dry ice one especially is really insane because once you put in the liquid nozzle on, like it really just lets the smoke sit there on surfaces or in your hand or in a bottle. It just like feels like there's a lot of weight to the smoke itself as opposed to traditional fog. Now this next one, you may not find a pro, but it was was a pro for me because it just made it fun handling the device. The first thing that I did was, you know, admire how it looked, but I also like tried to take out the latches and everything. And then when I took this out, it just made it feel like I was playing with a fidget toy. So you're just swapping a battery and just makes you feel cool. That's what feeling like should be about, just feeling cool while you're doing your craft, right? So speaking of this battery latch thing, uh, let's talk about the battery itself. So this is actually another pro that I want to get into, and it's that this unit runs on a single battery. And I thought that, you know, coming from the Smoke Genie, which runs on two batteries, oh, maybe like, I'm gonna run out of juice really quick. And I already had two extra batteries for the Smoke Genie. And I thought, oh, I gotta buy like two more just in case. I didn't even really have to swap batteries except for maybe one of the days. Like the first day that we brought this out to shoot in a more run and gun scenario, that whole shoot was probably maybe like four or five hours. Now, of course we're not using and triggering the device for four or five hours straight, but there were very long pops of smoke that we needed to get. According to their ad copy, a full charge of a battery will last you 45 minutes of producing smoke. I didn't even end up using the extra batteries that I bought, so I felt kind of silly, but hey, safety first, right? Speaking of safety, this device feels really safe to use. And I think this is really important because the smoke is safe to inhale and the device has uh, safety features to prevent it from overheating. That means that while you're using this and putting smoke on your talent's hair, you're not gonna be lighting their hair on fire. And they're actually certified by SGS, who's the world's leading company in testing, inspecting, and certifying. If you're buying, I don't know, cheap knockoffs and stuff like that, you are always compromising something. And most of the time it's safety and I don't have to worry about that with the Smoke Ninja. Next one is the affordability of the Smoke Ninja. Now, there's a reason that I didn't get the Smoke Genie sooner, and I've always wanted a portable smoke device like that, but the reason I didn't get it was because I couldn't justify the cost. Now, the Smoke Genie Pro is something like $750. In fact, there was a time where Mickey from PMI Gear DM'd me and he asked me, like, is there anything that you would improve from the Smoke Genie? And I said, oh, it all functions really well. The only thing would be the price point. And I said that if it was priced at around something like $400, then I would just buy it instantly. Especially because this unit is now $250 retailing, which is insane because it's a Smoke Ninja kit. So it comes with the precision nozzles, the batteries, the remote, everything to get you started to actually use the device right out of the box. That's insane for a device like this. I would have bought it in a heartbeat if I didn't receive the device to uh, shoot the promo video with. Now, this next one is really only an advantage coming from the Smoke Genie, and it's that when I received the device, the Smoke Genie, that is, I couldn't use it for a little while. Honestly, it was mostly because of my own laziness, but what was driving me back was that I needed to find the correct battery to use with the unit. You know, when you get that, you know, that initial excitement of unboxing the unit, and you're like, oh my gosh, everything looks so sleek and beautiful, and it looks so cool, I wanna use it right away, and you don't have batteries. It's like a, what's a PG way of saying like, in your really uh, takes the wind out of your sails? That. <laughs> and the ones that they recommended weren't easily available locally. And when I would try to find it online, it seemed like I had to pay for shipping or like I couldn't find the exact model. It took me a few months before I could actually use it. 
but the Smoke Ninja actually includes batteries, both for the device itself and also the wireless remote. Although it comes with batteries, it doesn't come with a battery charger. Honestly, it would be really bulky if they included that anyways, and you're probably not bringing that along with the shoot. It comes with a USB charging cable, and you can charge directly into the unit through the USB-C port. Now the last pro on the list, last but not least, I don't even know if it deserves to be on the pro list. I mean, it does, it's just I don't know if it, I'm just gonna say it. The pro is that I am so happy that this device even exists. And the reason being is that for a majority of my career, while I was doing product videos and stuff, I didn't have a portable smoke machine. It could just be handheld. It would be a big fog machine that I would lug around, or for small tabletop work, I would have a human smoke machine. His name is Jansen. He's my buddy, by the way, who was in the promo video. He was always behind the scenes using his vape and chucking out clouds onto the table. And it was just the most efficient way of doing things because we didn't have a device like this. And now, I don't have to feel guilty asking someone to keep destroying their lungs for the sake of the art. And honestly, it just makes me wish that there was a handheld smoke machine that existed much sooner. Now, other than the Smoke Genie and the Smoke Ninja, I haven't had any experience in working with other mini foggers or handheld smoke machines. But the ones that I've seen on the market, they... Yeah, I mean, they, they look great, honestly. Like, the smoke that comes out look like beautiful clouds of smoke. They're very thick, and I feel like they accomplish the job. But the device itself looks not that great. It doesn't look as uh, polished, I would say, and I don't know how reliable they really are, and I wouldn't be able to speak on how safe it is to use the units as well. And I think that safety is probably one of the things that you really can't compromise when it comes to working with electronic devices like this. So if you own any alternative handheld smoke machines and foggers, then let me know in the comments because I'm curious on how it compares with the Smoke Ninja. Now, if you already own the Smoke Ninja, then share your experience in the comments as well because I'm curious about how you feel after using it, and I'm sure that everyone else watching wants to know as well. I believe that no tool is ever a one-size-fits-all, so after sharing all this, it's really up to you whether or not that this brings value to your creative process and your type of work. So if you don't already own a clunky smoke machine, or maybe you strictly shoot corporate and real estate videos where it calls for a clean, crisp look, then this device might not be for you. Now, this may also not be for you if you're trying to fog up a really big space. So if you're in like a really large studio, or you're in the outdoors or something like that, then this may not be the device for you. You might need like three smoke ninjas, or you could you know, opt out for the smoke genie where I believe they have like a trident attachment where you can attach like three smoke genies or something like that. And that's probably more suitable for that. So if you're fogging up a reasonable size room, like a living room, garage, or even a studio space, depending on what you use, then this could be a great way to add volumetric lighting, to add a storytelling aspect to your scene, or maybe you're making food look hot and fresh and tasty on camera, or you're using it as special effects to add this sci-fi or fantasy element to your product videos, or you just want to feel like you're at a rave with the smoke and lasers, then this adds that extra polish that I always needed, and I'm 100% going to be throwing this in my camera bag for every shoot that I go on. And most importantly, it just makes creating more fun. And isn't that why we create in the first place? He's gassing up the car. Stop trying to kill me. We're making a product video. How would you use the smoke ninja?